Right, uh, in the next few minutes I just want to summarise some work that I've been doing with uh, Dan at Historic England, uh, really going back over probably about the last five years or so in origin. Um, many of the issues will be similar to what we've covered uh, already, uh, but uh, this is just my uh, take on the theme for this year's conference. Um, one way of thinking about a research agenda is it's a way of looking back, but it's also helping you inform you about the future as well. So I quite like this image of a, a mirror, as it were. Sort of, uh, uh, so uh, it shows you where you've been, but it also helps make decisions about what to do next. So can you pull out in front of that car? Important. Um, this is where we were. Uh, five years ago, this is familiar from what we've heard already, uh, paper-based research frameworks published as monographs, and that locks in uh, the knowledge. And I think coming to this from a uh, perspective uh, as a knowledge manager at Historic England, uh, books fossilise the, the knowledge that they contain. Uh, and if that's appropriate for what you want to do as a body record, that's fine. If it's something you want to keep live and active, is potentially a problem. Uh, so the new approach we're taking is to is shown here. We're going to model uh, the contents of those traditional publications, apply some of the standards that we've already discussed and mentioned, uh, create a digital platform. So that means it's easy to update uh, and maintain uh, these uh, that essential knowledge. And it also uh, we also want to encourage collaboration in the development. Uh, of these research frameworks. Uh, so don't worry about this. This is just uh, my making the point that you can model the knowledge that's contained in these publications. So the sticky notes are things that you can record information about and the lines between them are how they relate to each other. But it's, this is just a, a technique for uh, gathering and sharing thoughts on how, for example, an individual research question relates to the themes in a research framework. Uh, it's a way of capturing the thinking and it's helped us in our design of the work uh, that we're, uh, we've started, which Doug will speak more about in, in the next presentation. But I think this is the really important thing coming out of what I've heard so far, is to think of a research agenda as a database of questions. And when you stop thinking about it as a book that needs to be published uh, and then is finished, you start from the actual database, which you can keep up to date, uh, it opens up your thinking to a whole lot of other possibilities. So we wouldn't think, uh, we're mostly familiar with historic environment records or sites and monument records or inventories of archaeological sites in the country. You wouldn't publish that, you wouldn't think it was finished, you wouldn't uh, fossilise it at any point. It's a database that you can add to uh, as, you, as you need to. Uh, and the, the value of this is uh, the points that Julian and Peter were making earlier is that when you start thinking about the database, then you can build on all the work that has already been done uh, on standardising data and improving access to knowledge. Uh, again, don't worry about uh, CDOC ERM. That's the people such as myself and Julian and Peter can worry about this for you. Uh, but uh, the CDOC ERM is simply a uh, a globally applicable standard for structuring uh, the knowledge and the content and the information about the past. And it includes uh, the notion of design or procedure. Uh, and this is where I think uh, research agendas are starting to play into this uh, already existing model. Uh, interestingly, there was a session on CDOC CRM uh, at this conference. and. Um, uh, as a result of that, uh, I found out that um, the uh, uh, ICS Fourth, the research institute which maintains this model on behalf of the community, uh, has also recently started creating a database of the questions that have come up at EAA at uh, European uh, uh, at EAA conferences, as covered in the various papers and proceedings. <coughs> so there may be work that is already being done, which can help us uh, in our thinking. That was literally just found out yesterday. Uh, again, think about this as a database. These, uh, this might be a list of the, the fields in the database, if you're trying to think about it in that way. So 
the sort of things you might want to record about a question. So what is it about? You know, what, you know, it, it's the, some of the ideas I'm trying to get across here. So is it a question which relates to particular dates? And we can talk about the periods, though, uh, standards. Does it relate to a particular type of artifact or type of site? And we have the heritage data standards. Uh, so a lot of that groundwork is already there. Uh, there are some particular issues on uh, spatial relevance, which uh, are, are very quite so tough to crack, but again, lots of other people are thinking about it. And also about broad topics. Uh, we're very good in archaeology at indexing things very precisely about the things we're very interested in, like monuments and uh, artifacts. We're not so good at indexing the things which are of more general relevance, such as uh, disease or trade. Uh, so, um, if you think of our new research agendas as expressed as a list of research questions, uh, and obviously, once that question is in the database, as it were, it can appear anywhere. So this gives you that flexibility uh, to have different research agendas uh, fronted by a national authority, uh, a period specialist interest society, uh, uh, any other kind of group, but in the background. You've got that sort of uh, that question can come from various uh, can be drawn from various uh, places, and Dan coined this expression, which I think really captures the thinking on this. It's a sort of a pot of questions that you can dip into to come up with the the particular dish which your circumstances need. So this is uh, <laughs> culturally relevant and uh, uh, sort of, uh, so yeah here's. Here's the pot of questions, and here's some of this research. Okay. If you don't like seafood, if you don't like seafood, you just take the tomatoes. It's okay. Um, uh, just a couple of thoughts on why I focus on research questions. I think these are useful uh, to bear in mind. Uh, a research question uh, specifies a gap in the knowledge that we have. Uh, it, it's as soon as you. Uh, put a question mark on the end of a sentence, it makes you think about how can you answer that. And it facilitates that dialogue, it helps inform your uh, approaches to how you're planning your next, your next project. It also focuses, if you want to write um, a question, it focuses on what you want to know rather than what you're doing, and that's quite a useful distinction to make. Uh, so in practice, uh, how you actually create these, we've discussed this already, this is just a couple of thoughts uh, I had on how you can uh, create this, this, this database. And that can then inform your uh, initial product objectives, uh, you can adapt it to the database, so you can update it, you can answer some of those questions and mark them as ask, answer. You can add new questions. It's a live thing rather than a fossilised piece of knowledge. And of course, by undertaking research and answering a question, you can show that you've made progress, which is a, a key point in terms of demonstrating research impact. Uh, I think that's about it.